Welcome to Underdog Talk. I'm your host, Eric Jones Jr., the underdog with the heroic heart. And I have conversations with successful underdogs. And today's no different than any other day. I have Jamal Sylvester, a powerhouse in working force development, entrepreneur, Amazon, number one best-selling author and former pro athlete. From consulting and coaching to motivational speaking, he equips individuals with the tools to rise above challenges, reach their potential, get ready for an inspirational conversation packed with wisdom, purpose, and good advice. Yes, sir. How's it going? Man, it's going good. I just got off the highway. I understand. So I need a fun fact from you. Okay. Fun fact. Uh, I uh, was a 1990 Indiana All-Star. Okay. Yeah, so with Damon Bailey and Eric Montrose. Okay. uh, You know, I I didn't realize uh, how prestigious of an award that was uh, when I did it. uh, But uh, I was the first. My bad. I was the first. I was the first Indiana All Star in my school in like forty five years. And you know, when you young and you ambitious, you chase after stuff and you don't really realize uh, the, the the impact. Of that, and so to be chosen as one of the top twelve players in the entire state of Indiana was a big deal. And I only played varsity my junior and senior year, so oh, okay, you know that 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 says a lot. If you yeah. know Indiana basketball, especially back then, because that yeah. was when it was just one class, and you had to get it how you live. Back yeah, then. <laughs> yeah. Everybody didn't know you. You ain't had right. the videos where oh, let's pull up here. No, nah, it was the newspaper, or you had to be really good for people to know. Yeah. So yeah, a salute to you on that because that definitely. Back then, yeah, it definitely was different. Yeah, basketball was different. Who's yeah. your hysteria? Like, I don't, you don't even hear people say that no more. But yeah. back then, like, when I first moved here from Chicago, like, man, what y'all talking about? And then I witnessed a sectional basketball game. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I think I like how that feels. Yeah, it's like different. Smell the butter popcorn, hear the shoes squeaking. And then you got the fire marshal here because they can't let nobody else. Like, yo, this a high school game. This ain't no professional game. Yeah. They yeah. out here. So yeah. They need to get that feeling back here. Yeah. They don't they don't have that. Like at high school games, like that was the thing. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm not in high school, I'm not going. It's like, no, nah, we need to see who little buddy is and everybody talking about like if you was that dude, you packing the gym because everybody wanted to see what you was about. Yeah. But it's it's so hard nowadays because everybody gets to see your highlights and stuff. It's like it's not really like, ooh, I heard he gonna I heard he dropped 30 a game, but I want to see it. See you can it, see yeah. it now. So it's a little different. But yeah, high school games is definitely, oh man, definitely different. That's like uh we won the state championship for AAU last year and none of the boys like it ain't really clicked in in their head I'm like y'all realize there's a lot of people that play sports their whole life that don't win this and they they play at a high level like this ain't something just like ooh but you know they're 10 they're not they were 9 and 10 um and so it's like now we going back now it's like okay now there's something we can go after because my son was like it was easy and it was like we it, I, but it's a different day too. And yeah, so, they. Uh, yeah, how they think about things and think about the game is is way different. Uh, part of that is because of, you know, I, I've followed you since I've been here, and I've watched you be a father to him, and mm-hmm. I've watched you like in your journey with him from when he was a little bitty fella when yeah. he first put the ball in his hand. Yeah, and I've watched you both grow together, but I've watched also how you've kind of put him in a position to be able to do whether it's basketball or he's a he's an author too now. So yeah. you know what I mean you've kind of set him up where you love basketball, but if he if he don't want to do it, he don't have to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, I love watching you do that and I love that that you're transparent enough uh, to let, you know, us as as civilians or as the public see that, you know, that process with him. And so for him, it's probably like it was just a game to him. Like yeah. I'm sure that he was excited about it and yeah. he happy, you know, with yeah. the with the uh the trophy or whatever they received. Yeah. But for him it's like, man, my, my biggest reward is that man, my pops was here with me to do this, man. And yeah. That's that's better than any trophy you can yeah. get, any any medal you can get. Yeah, you so right. So I salute you for that. Appreciate that. Yeah. Appreciate that. And it's I just do stuff that I think that'll help him. Like people, you know, come up, man, you doing it. I'm like, man, I'm just trying to help him because if he get my height, ah, who's saying he going to the league? Not saying that he can't, not saying whatever his story is is his, but I'm thinking like, all right, 
he don't love basketball yet. He's good, right. but he don't even love it yet. Right. So it's like, all right, you you love to play. You don't like missing, but you don't do the stuff behind the scenes. But you like to do this other little stuff. You like making money. You like buying stuff. Okay, so let me show you how to do both yeah. so you can choose. And Because I didn't have that choice. My biological dad died, and all he left me was questions. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to give him something different because you never know when your time is up. But if I can give him enough to where he can take it, if something was to happen to me and he got his own now, then I did my job as a dad. And that's yeah. that's all that I be trying to do. One of the most do. powerful scenes in Black Panther is when – he went to the other side mm -hmm. and he talking to his dad, man, why did y'all leave him? Yeah. And then he was like, you know, father, I, I can't do it. Yeah. He said, man, if I ain't prepare you, and he said, man, then I failed as a father. Yep. You know what I mean? I yep. was like, man, that was and that's, so proud. And, that, and that's how it is being a dad though. Um, so you got a, a athletic journey. Now you got a journey where you're coaching, but you're not coaching on the basketball court. So how how did that start and why? Like how, why and when? Oh, man, it was accidentally on purpose, man. Uh, <laughs> my mentor used to say that all the time. Uh, and I'm like, dude, what, what are you talking about? And just being around athletics and being around sports, like uh, I've kind of always been like the best player, like once I really got good. Yeah. Uh, but I've always had a heart to help people. Mm -hmm. uh, my mentor used to put me on the team with my little brother, and then he would put me with, he used to call them Bruce's and Steve's. He'd give me three Bruce's and Steve's, and then he'll stack the other team, mm -hmm. and he would make us play them. And we would, it'd be 19-19, they would beat me, mm -hmm. or beat us 21-19, yeah. and I used to be so mad. And he was like, yeah, you can get yours, but you got to learn how to, yeah. Get the cause what they gonna do is when it get tight, they finna start double teaming you. Yeah. You can't throw the ball to Bruce and Steve now and expect for them to hit a shot. They ain't touched the ball all game. So I learned through losing and through yep. playing with people who had less than me, but then seeing the result of that, like, wow, I like he ain't great, but somebody will pick him up now. Like yeah. before, he would always be on the sideline. Now yeah. he got people picking him up. And so that kind of helped me, and I began to see that I had the ability uh, to be able to kind of, as a superstar, as a star, kind of step down from that that perch and come with the common people or come with the with the busters, so to speak, and 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 mingle with them, but then also get them game and you know kind of talk to them and show them like well. We probably don't want you shooting no threes, but if you come right here, you remember that last game? Yep. Remember they came to double team me? Yep. I threw it to you, but you wasn't ready and the ball went out of bounds. So just working with them before we start playing full court. And so just all of those things. And then just lived experience, man. I worked in the Department of Corrections for a bunch of years and did a bunch of uh, uh, character development and leadership development and that. I didn't have a program per se. It was just me doing doing me while I was at work and ultimately I ended up changing a whole bunch of young men's lives and so they look at me still now today as a mentor a coach a father figure mm -hmm. and so I'm like you know what I've been in this this uh public space now uh in nonprofit, uh but then in corporate like I can take some of them skills. We always talk about transferable skills. Yeah, Those things are transferable. And so yep. I, I took what I learned on the court and I said, man, let me try this over here. And so I became a John Maxwell certified uh, trainer, facilitator, and coach. Uh, got some other certifications. But a lot of it was just people identifying that you got a gift and you need to start operating in that gift. And yeah, it might not have worked over here. Uh, but it ain't over until it's over, until you say it's over. And so I just took it and, and flipped it over here, and it's been real cool doing it. I love that. I love that because you took the, the basketball coaching, and people don't realize <clears throat> that you can take sports and transfer it to life or take life and transfer it to sports. And I think that's one where area where we're good at with the speaking, like with, you know, transferring sports because you – most people know basketball, and they're like, oh, okay, I get what he's saying. Oh, okay. And so I love that because coaching, some of the stuff you said, I'm like, okay, good. I've said that to my players. So I know if, some, if your mentor said that to you, then I know. Because I feel like as a as if I got a point guard, 
but you are, you know everybody can score twenty now as a point guard. Get your teammates involved. Yeah. Because guess what? They involve. They making shots. They're going to play defense for you. They're going to be able to knock that shot down at the end of the game when right. you double team and you can trust them. But if you don't, they ain't going to play defense. They ain't going to do nothing. They're going to be sitting there, hmm, hmm, hmm. And then you'll be like, oh, I scored all the points. And you talking trash to people, but you're really not that good of a player because it's a team game. Right. And so I, I, I like that because I always tell people, like my point guards, I man, get it. Hey. Nephew, get everybody else involved, yeah. bro. Like, what you doing? You can and get yours anytime. Anytime, anytime you want. Because guess what? If if you let them get theirs, now it opens it up more for you. Absolutely. And then that's the same way <clears throat> within life. You got to get on the right team yeah. to know your role and stuff of that sort. So I love that that you were able to trans use your transferable skills. And because sometimes people. We, we think we got to go to schools and all these different things and the skills that you actually have inside of you. You just got to tune them up and go to the right place to to get them to where they can transfer here and transfer there. Because sometimes the language of corporate might not work in schools. Right. And you got to be able to know how to, you know, change. Ability, man. Uh, yep. and I think that's the beauty of, I would say, basketball, but I think it's sports in general. Yep. Uh, I found a T-shirt my sophomore year at Ball State. Uh, and it was the last T-shirt on the rack. It said, basketball, way of life. This is 1992. Mm -hmm. I did not know what I bought or what that truly was saying because yeah. it really is because you go through highs and lows. You go through hitting a game-winning shot to missing a game-winning free throw. You go from having an injury and now you can't play, but you still got to be on the team. You still got to cheer. All of those different things and nuances that come with sports, I'm like, man, I done went through all of that stuff in life. And it wasn't until I crossed maybe 30, 35, mm -hmm. that I was even able to identify that those things are really the same. And so once I begin to, like, wait, you've been here before, bro. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. You've been yeah. here before. Yeah. You done did this a thousand times. Yeah. Oh, life. I ain't going to say it became easy. It became easier to do. Yep. Uh, it's never going to be easy. Uh, I don't think it was created to be that way. <laughs> nah. uh, but it becomes easier to do. Uh, and it becomes something that you enjoy because over here, we love the the, the thrill of, oh, you know what? Oh, I can't go right. And you're going to keep on forcing me to go right. Well, I'm going to work on my right. So the mm -hmm. next time I run up against yep. you, I'm busting your head yep. going right. You do the same thing in life. I tell people, if you a top tier athlete, you should be a top tier student because those very skills that you used on the yep. court, you use them in the classroom. You say you don't like math, you didn't like going right neither. Yep. What did you do? Practice. Yep. It's mm. very simple. We just make it hard. Yep. Uh. Yeah. That that's true. Or if you're a good student and you play sports, you should you should be able to know the game more. I think that's that's where kids lack at is uh, the IQ of whatever sport they play yeah. because. They see the highlights and stuff. Like you said, like when I play against players, they be like, oh, yeah, come on, coach. I'm like, I'm really coaching you, but you don't even see that I'm coaching you. I'm making you go left every time. Right. You ain't got a left. Right. Your left trash. You uncomfortable. <laughs> right. I'm making you go that every way. I know you want to go this way. I'm not letting you go. Right. So guess what? Next time you, yeah, oh, now you making it left. You got it. Yeah. I'm trying to help you out because when you get in the game, you can't always go right. Or you might need to start going left to throw somebody off, and people don't. And like you said, you got to work on the same thing, in uh, in your life. And that's what for for me, for real, for real, basketball. Once I understood all the different stuff I had to go through for basketball, and I was like, oh, I can just transfer this to life. Without basketball, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have the confidence. I wouldn't be the person that I am because I had to. I had to have that dog just to right. play on the playground. I, I, I didn't make too many school teams because I wasn't a good student, but just to play on the playground, I had to have that dog. So I had to realize I got to have that dog in whatever I do in life because just like in life on a basketball court, oh, his arm's short. We don't want to hire him. We don't, mm. we don't think to put, you know, oh, you don't. I'm going to just start creating my own stuff. Oh, y'all don't want to pass me the ball. Okay, check rock. Now I can shoot wherever I want because I got the ball. Right. So it's the same, you know, it's the same thing. And you have to realize uh, when you get to a certain age, because I'm almost like you. When I got to my 30s, I'm, I'm on closer to 40. And with mid-30s, I'm like, I didn't been through adversity. This ain't, mm. this shit ain't nothing. No. This is 
this not saying like you said it ain't easy but it's like i didn't been through hard times before i can get over this or i know this ain't gonna last long yeah. sometimes we'd be like oh it's going no it don't because yeah. god always show up it'd be the fourth quarter two seconds left <laughs> on the clock and here come god oh, right. god, oh no man yeah. and it that's just how life is and i like that i like people that can um that have so question it's off the cart do you use your store do you use your story with what you're using or do you use just your basketball knowledge it really depends on the situation mm -hmm. uh it, it, especially and who i'm who i'm working with because mm -hmm. if they got some type of basketball acumen mm -hmm. then and i'll i'll find that out in in the introduction and us talking uh, but then I can begin to say things and connect the dots for them using basketball. But if they don't have basketball acumen, then now I have to lean into my lived experiences. Uh, and it's really being intentional, mm -hmm. uh, emotional interviewing, uh, and, and finding out, you know, certain questions that you ask people, you can find a lot out about them. Mm -hmm. And then being able to connect the information that I'm getting from them. And they don't even know that I'm pulling information from them. And then use it when it's time for me to come around and do some coaching or suggest some things. Yeah. I can now connect maybe a lived experience with what, what I know they need so that they can see it. Because for a lot of people, it's... It's having all of these dots. You remember when we was little, they had those coloring books that had one through a hundred, and you mm -hmm. you look at it, yeah. I don't know what this is. Yeah. It's a bunch of numbers on here and it's yeah. some dots. And it wasn't until you started connecting the dots that yeah. you could begin to see the picture. Mm -hmm. For me, I got two superpowers. One is being resilient, and the other one is being a dot connector. I know how to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And I know how to go to the hood and connect the dots. And I know how to go to academia and connect the dots. I know how to go to corporate and connect the dots. But I've been intentional about that because there's been times that I was in those spaces and I, I felt out of sorts. And so it's being intentional, doing your homework, finding mentors, getting connected to people who, who have perfected it or mastered it, and then gleaning from them. And then I make it my own. Like, I've never, like, I remember, like, growing up and, like, everybody wanted to be like Mike. I'm like, yeah, I want to get, I want to drop 40 and 50. And I did. But really, I had to, be, I'm like, I really play like Scotty. I'm built like Scotty. And so it's really finding, you know, it's yep. gleaning those one or two things from somebody, incorporating it in to your own thing so that, because God didn't call me to be Mike or my name would have been Mike. Yeah. My name's Jamal. Yeah. And so I had to learn how to be Jamal. Yeah. And so I think people sometimes even get caught up in those people or things that they're aspiring for and then you lose sight of who you are. Yep. Uh, and then when you get to your destined place, you can't even stay there or you can't enjoy it because you've been too busy trying to be somebody that, that you ain't and that you wasn't called to be. And so uh, for me, it's just taking those lived experiences and being able to connect the dots with people to help people kind of see a clear picture because uh, it's difficult when you're in the storm. Yeah. You know, you, know, you can't yeah. see nothing. You can't nothing. hear nothing. Yeah. And you don't want to hear nothing because <laughs> you're trying to get through the storm. Yep. And so when you can have somebody that can kind of put an umbrella over you, like, oh, man, oh, that's what that is. Yeah. It'll make you want to fight harder. It'll make you want to go a little bit further. Yeah. When you can't see what you're fighting for or what you're working for, it's hard. Like, it takes a special person yeah. to fight for something on the other side of that wall that they can't see. Yeah. Like, bro, I don't, and you don't know what's going to be over there. Nope. It could be what you want, and it could not be what you want. Are you still willing to push through and fight to get? Because for me, it's, it's, it's from here to there. It's that. Me getting from here to there, it's all of that work, all of that turmoil, all of that pain. That's that's where the that's where the magic happens. It's yeah. not when I get what I want. Nope. It's the work that I put in to get to it. And a lot of people, because of social media, you see one hit wonders. You see, and you just see the people at the top of the mountain. Yep. You don't see how many times they slipped and fell and cut themselves. You don't see how many times that they looked up at that mug and was like, man, you know what? That's too much. I don't want to do that. Yeah. You just see them at the top in the nice cars with the money and the clothes. Yep. And, and we got to get away from that. Like, it takes work for anything that's great or anything worth having. It's going to require work of you. Yeah, definitely. Man, you said a handful there. I Yeah, definitely listen to that answer. But... To what you were saying at first, you got to know your role. Yeah. Like, 
even in business or in life, we don't even got to say sports. Everybody want to be Mike. But you can't be Mike. You ain't ready to be Mike. Being Mike is is a whole different ball game. Cause all they saw was, oh, Mike come in, he dropped his little points, and he uh he gamble and all that stuff. What he had to work at some point. Right. He had to or Steph Curry, I tell my son, because Steph Curry didn't get to Steph until my son was born. So my son don't know the beginning years. Right. He don't know. Steph couldn't walk down the street without uh, twisting, his ankle. twisting his ankle. <laughs> so it's like you gotta understand. That there is is ugly all the way in, but you gotta know your role. Like I'm looking at my son now, and I'm like, you need to watch Derek White, cause he play he play defense. He knocked down his threes. He timely. His team trust him, but he make the he make the winning plays, and that's he, he's not the superstar. Right. He's not Tatum. He not Brown. He not uh, Porzingis. He like down at the bottom of the list, and but he does what he's supposed to, and that's how you have to win in life. You gotta know your role because guess what? With this podcast right now. I'm the point guard, the powerful, I'm everybody. Right. But at some point, there's going to be people behind the scenes, and all I'm going to have to do is this. All right, thanks, thank you for coming. See you later. I can go home, and they're going to do all that. Yeah. And um, I'm they're going to be happy with their role because that's what they want to do. Yeah. Because – I know how to do that, but I don't want to do that. I don't yeah. like it. That's not for me. Right. This is on this side of the cameras for me, not on the other side. And I understood my role in certain areas. I understand, like, I need a woman or I need some uh, ad admin type of person to do the logistics. I can come up with the ideas and what to do, but I need you to come up with the logistics because I don't know none of that. And I'm going to mess it up or I'm not going to get it done because I'm going to forget. Yeah. I know who I am or with playing basketball is me. And my two buddies, my buddy would be like, Eric, run your route. Stop doing the extra stuff. What, what you doing? Why are you doing all that? Run what you're supposed to so I can get you the ball where you need to so we you can knock this three down and we can get back on defense. And sometimes people want to do extra because they see a Michael. They see a Steph, but they're Draymond Green. And it's okay because guess what? Without him, they wouldn't win. But people don't – they always want to be seen. They always got to be – or they think – People just woke up and magic happened. No, 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 no. It takes a lot no. of work. It takes a lot. You think, you think about the human body. You talking about a role. Like, does the hand say, now you know what the hand does. Yeah. Man, it has a function. Yeah. Without it, like if we had hands on our feet. Yeah. No. Think about what life would look like. Yeah. So every every part is important. And I think because the world has like hyper focused mm -hmm. on like the superstar or the person that's doing this or the, the top social media influencer or all of this thing. Yeah. That that's what you focus on. And it's like, well, like you said, it's somebody that's behind the scenes. That's probably making just as much money, less stress, and it's what they want to do. Like you got to yeah. be okay or with without them. Your role is. There wouldn't be without the cameraman. We that. wouldn't know a lot of the influencers that we know, the people behind the scenes, because they are making the magic. And like, uh, for instance, I don't, all, I don't have all my limbs, so I can't do a thumbs up. People take that for granted, but that's a part of the the role of your hands or some rolls of my hands. I can't use and it's like dang people don't even realize that that role is how important it is for it to be able to grip something and open it without having to ask somebody or get a towel or something to do it that role of your hand is working and it's doing what it's supposed to but sometimes you don't have that role and you have to step in and, and take over it's like if you're a manager and you work at a job you can't complain because your employees didn't come in. You have to come in. You got to do your job. Yeah. You have to come in and do what you're supposed to because that's your role. Right. Because if you don't show us that, oh, a man's down, next man up, then how you expect me to want to come in when somebody called off? Man. They just yeah, don't. They don't. It's a tough thing. but And I know it, it, this doesn't look glamorous. Yeah. It, and I think that's a lot of what it is mm. because we've, we've not glamorized the importance of the hand or the foot. Or the eye, and like you said, until you can't use it, yeah. then you like, dang, I wish I could. You know, I'm like, man, I lost my sight for a short period of time. I got poked in the eye hooping with somebody who had some dirty nails. Bro, I was driving home. I'm talking about it's as clear as this. It's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it was like somebody poured uh, 
some 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 goo on my windshield. I'm like, what? Like, what is going? Luckily, I was right by the crib and I was able to get to the house. Man, I ended up having an infection in my eye. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, I, I don't even play with my eyes no more now. Yeah. And it's it's that stuff. It's like understanding the importance of the role, even if nobody else acknowledges it. You have to know in your heart of hearts the importance of this role yep. and why this role is needed because sometimes without the small roles, you can't do the big thing. Yeah. The big thing doesn't even happen without the little thing, but most people only see the big thing. Yeah. And so your name is not in lights unless I got this little thing. And so just having people be okay with that role and understanding that that's not going to be your role forever. Yeah. Like yeah. This, for the for this season, you a hand. Yeah. For the next season, you might be the legs. Yeah. You got to be cool with whatever season you win and I think that's 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 where once I crossed 35, I began to recognize the seasons. You will hear people talk about it. Yeah. I'm like, man, what are you talking about? Like when you say season to me, I'm even thinking sports or I'm thinking fall, spring, yeah. summer, yep. winter. But yep. oh no, it's a season in life yep. for growth and development and for you to get this thing that God is preparing you for your next thing. And so I need you to be a hand right now so that you can understand I'm going to make you a boss and you need to know what a hand does. And the only way you know what a hand does is by being a hand. Yep. That's why you're doing this now. Yep. So that you're going to be able to identify, you're going to be able to, you know exactly what you want, how you want it. You're going to be able to speak the language. And we don't always want to do that. My mentor used to call it an over-under sandwich. He used to say, Ma... Before you can ever be over somebody, you got to learn how to be under somebody. Yep. And I didn't want to hear that. I'm, I always want to be the man. Yep. And I think that's the problem. Always want to be the man. Understand and go learn from somebody and get what you're supposed to get so that when you are over somebody, you can give them what they need and you can ensure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Yep. You got to you gotta be a, on somebody else's team before you get a team. Man. And, that, and it just takes... The mindset and being humble enough to say, like, I'm not there yet. Right. I, okay, I'm a red shirt. I need to sit down and watch the seniors and the juniors do what they supposed to. I'm not necessarily ready to go out there yet. Or, like when you were saying, the 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 small part is the role players. Championship teams don't win with just the star players. Without them role players uh, knocking down some of them shots, getting steals and playing, or some of the people you never see play, right. they on a the practice squad. Without hard. them going hard on on these players, the players wouldn't get better. Yeah. So, or like the the media people, are like um, what's his name, Spostrom. He was the video guy for yeah. Miami for a long time. Now he been the head coach, getting paid good money, right. all that stuff. But he was the guy just, all right, you got to watch the videos and look where he's at. It's all about whatever season you in. But you got to, whatever season you in, you got to prepare yourself for the next season. Because you could be in a winning season. That losing season could be coming. It might not even be a bad season. It might not be where y'all uh, y'all tank the season and y'all get a number one draft pick. It just ah, we made it to the playoffs. We didn't ah, we didn't win. So it's not as that it's horrible or that when you having a bad season, it's gonna turn out super great. It's just gonna get a little better. But if you don't prepare for it, then you are gonna stay in that same season. You like why does it keep raining? Well, right. you ain't got a freaking umbrella yet. Yeah. I, the, the weatherman said it's supposed to rain until right. uh, an umbrella come, but you don't realize that. And a lot of people don't want to. They don't. They they want it like microwave. They don't want the uh, the slow cooker or something cooked in the oven. They want the mic the macaroni and cheese on the stove, mm -hmm. which ain't bad. It's all right. right. But I want I want that bake. Yeah. I want that out the ah, oven. when you pick it. Ooh, look at the cheese. I yeah. Tell people all the time, man. I said, man. That banquet microwave dinner, mm -hmm. and then grannies or yeah. moms, yeah, it's, chicken dinner, yeah, yeah, it's totally yeah. different. Yeah, you gotta wait a little while for it, and I think that's the hard part. Yep, we got this this microwave society that we want it hot and we want it now. Yeah, that we we've, <laughs> we've we've taught ourselves how to not wait. Yep, the, it's in the wait. It's and then mm, when you get it, if you learn how to wait. It's always, I'm talking about, I'm a living testament. It's always been worth the wait. Yeah. It, always. It, it It is. People don't realize. I had to, I'm definitely one of those. Because uh, the last guest I just had, I, like, he, we kind of started. And he, 
he didn't took off, and it's like, ah, that's not my journey. I had to go through a couple of these headaches that I had to go through. I had to go get married and get a divorce and learn certain lessons or in life. And it was like, if I and I always ask myself, I was like, man, wonder if I haven't, if I wouldn't have had some of the losses or lessons from the last couple years, would I be where I'm at today? And I wouldn't. Or I was like, if I was still married, would I be where I'm at today with what I'm doing? And it's like, you can't be stuck on because somebody got further on or they doing this or they got this award. It might not be your time. Okay, your stats was up, but they stats is a little better. It, uh, well, you know, your team didn't really win, so they couldn't give you the MVP. They, they wanted to, but they couldn't, and you got to accept. I had a great season. I did everything I'm supposed to. Now the results, whatever the results are, I'm going to take with them. And people don't want to do that, or they don't want the small wins. A lot of small wins help you get them big wins. If you don't, if you don't celebrate the small wins, then you're not gonna be ready for the big wins. It's just like with money. If you can't handle the little, how you gonna handle a lot? And people be like, "Oh, I'm ready," or they win the lottery, be broke in about six six months. Yeah, because they don't know how to handle money. You don't know how to. You don't. You haven't educated yourself for the things that you want, but you want them, and then you pray for them, and God say, "Okay, here you go, fumbled." Man, Fumble the, the bag. Time. It happened all the time. So <clears throat> I got a new segment. Okay. It's called Myth versus Reality. Okay. So you're going to pick a number one through uh, 12, which because uh, I ain't got all the numbers. So if you pick a number, I'm going to just tell you pick another number. But then I'm going to tell you the myth, and you're going to say if it's a myth or a reality. Okay. Uh, so pick a number one through 12. Number four. Okay. All right. Got number four here. It only takes Hard work to succeed. So I have a question to kind of, was there a point where something besides hard work helped you through your breakthrough? How much do you think it was luck or timing contribute to your journey? That's a great question. Uh, I definitely think hard work is, is a, is a key uh, to being successful. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a few more components that, that go with that. Uh, you just talked about luck. Uh, I was I was informed at an early age what the definition of luck was, and mm -hmm. it says when preparation meets opportunity. And once I realized that, like you say that growing up and going through life, man, you lucky. And, and then I started to pay attention to that definition, and then I began to go back and look at people who were successful. And... Man, no, that ain't luck. He was prepared. Yeah. And so you got your hard work, you got your preparation, and, and, and that's how you become lucky. But then you have to have passion. Like, you got to have a desire uh, because on those days that you talk, like, on those, those days when you ain't winning, on those days when your shot ain't falling, on those days when if you're in business and you can't make a sale— you still have to push through. Yeah. And so it's having that dedication, having that that passion to go with that preparation. Uh, and then that'll that'll give you, and with the hard work, success is inevitable. And so for me, uh, I, I think it was, once again, when I crossed like 35, like the light switch came on, it just things began to, I viewed things differently. I began to hear things differently. Like I, like it was like I had scales on my ears and I couldn't hear mm -hmm. what people were saying to me about me, uh, about the world. And when they fell off, I'm like, oh, OK, now I got to do some real live self-reflection. I got to like I got to go to the lab and yeah. I got to be honest with myself about yep, where man. I'm at and what I'm doing. And you don't always want to do that. Like you don't like for people to point out your flaws and you really don't like to admit your flaws. And when you can get comfortable with hearing someone uh, tell you where you're uh, lacking at or you're deficient at, and then you can also look at yourself and say, man, you know what? He was right. Like, man, I, and it been for a while, though, but I just kind of been masking it because I'm real good with this. And so I, I do this a little more and make you forget that I'm weak over here. Yeah. And, man, the more that you can tap in to those things that you're that you're weak in and focus on them. Uh, I got a guy, uh, he, he told me, he said, man, I watch you and you, you, you great at this, 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 and this. 
And I always see you doing this, this, and this, and this. He was like, but I've never seen you. And I'm like, because I'm not good at it. And he's like, you ain't going to never get good at it. Why do you keep working on things that you already good at? Mm -hmm. That's like riding a bike. I, I cannot do it. I didn't play basketball here recently for a year and a half because I messed my shoulder up. I went to the gym. I got released by my doctor to go back. Man, I shot around for seven minutes. I missed one shot in seven minutes. Ain't touched the basketball. Ain't been in the gym. Yeah, because it's... But I got a bank account that I done deposit a whole bunch of hours and time and effort and energy into that I can always withdraw from. If you try to tap into your, your weaknesses and you ain't putting nothing in there, when you go try to withdraw, it's going to say decline. Yeah. And so yeah. you got to be okay with admitting and identifying what those weak areas are and then working on them. Yeah, I do that. <clears throat> I do that more. I'm uh, a little over 38, I mean 35, and I, I, I had to, you know, be honest. And <clears throat> I would tell people to look in the mirror when you talk to yourself mm -hmm. so you can really look at yourself and see how you really looking because that, uh, that, uh, that do something different because right. you can see the pain or whatever it is and you telling yourself, like, Come on, get get your shit together. Like I'd be having to be like, what you on, bro? Like what Go you doing? Like, you yeah. <laughs> because it's like I know I should be doing better. It's like, bro, stop doing whatever you're doing over here. Or now I've been telling myself, all right. Did you do enough work to reward yourself to go hang out or go get that meal that you said you wanted? Or you just got to go in that cupboard and see what you got and make that. So it's like, I'm, am I going to reward myself? Did I do enough? And I'm honest to say, no, nah, I didn't. Okay, like, well, I can't go do nothing. I'm going to just sit down today. And when you do that and honest with yourself, that that helps you because you know what you're supposed to be doing. Right. You know, it, yeah, like, and you know if you're not good at something, yeah, like kids. My son, bro, I know you can shoot. What else can you do? Right. Why do we keep shooting? <laughs> Why are we shooting? Right. Guess what? You need to work on the pump fake so you can, when somebody come, you can pump fake them and go. You need to work on going to the hole because guess what? After about two or three makes, they're going to be like, oh, little man can shoot. Let's guard him. Right. Now you got to get to the hole, but you ain't working on that. Or you, uh, man, well, I got to, yep, that's, that's what, yep. When you hun and don't want to do it, that's what you're supposed to do. Absolutely. That's when you're supposed to do it. That's when, like, God awake. People, I see it all the time, and I had to realize that, God, why am I up at 3 o'clock in the morning? Because God telling you start working. Mm -hmm. Start working on yourself. Everybody else sleep. Everybody else is quiet. And when you start doing that, you're like, oh, I, oh these, I, let me write this down. Oh, I can, uh, I can read this book. Oh, I can do this. Oh, I can do that because nobody else is up. Wow. And you start to realize. Yeah. And sometimes God will put you in that position to to see if you lucky or not right because you can get okay oh hey you get to play i remember i didn't uh i didn't make the team in ninth grade i was a manager uh i think it was it's really because i was what 14 i went i was little auto I, I mean i'm still short but i i didn't get five foot till i was in 10th grade so he was you know i'm seeing the plays you know practicing with the team you know working on my game being a manager he was like jones you're gonna get to play Oh, okay. And the other team was like, oh, man, that was it basically like, oh, that was luck or, oh, oh my gosh, that was crazy. I was like, that's what I do. Right. I just got the opportunity to show y'all. Right. Like, it ain't like I just woke up and I, I can just throw the ball in the basket or people nowadays be like, oh, I could beat you or how you make that shot? I've been playing over 30 something years. I mean, right. it ain't like I just woke up and I can just make this. This ain't luck. I've worked on this. Right. It looks lucky to you, but it ain't. And that's why people charge thousands and millions of dollars for stuff that only might last an hour or yeah. 30 minutes because they've put in the years of being able to go up there. Now, when you first started speaking, you might have been doing a whole lot of free, getting a little bit. Now you can go up there. Uh, No, I need a little bit more than that. Absolutely. Yeah, because you put in the years. You've done what you're supposed to. Just like somebody going to be like, no, you ain't you ain't go uh, make all your shots. Uh, Why wouldn't I? I've done it. Plenty of times before I was injured, right. now I'm injured, that don't mean that it's going to stop and people don't realize, like, you got to put in the work whatever you want to do. Period. With the podcast, 
I be like, man, you really got to study. You really got to learn. You really got to see what's new. You got to, you know, when I first, was, you, oh, I, okay, I'm seeing Shannon Sharp. He got his logo on his cards. Okay, this, this, and that. Oh, they ask, they having little segments or different questions besides just the regular. Like, you got to study what you're doing or you wouldn't be good. Perfecting your crap. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah, because if you I, don't. And I, and I can say that I've watched you. I was thinking when I was driving here, I was pulling up in the parking lot. I said, man, I don't even know if he even remember how we even got connected. It was through jazz. Yeah, yep, yep. I through connected jazz. you to the manager, and yep. then you ended up being the guest speaker yep. at the yep. award. And guess day. what? I work for Jag now. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you don't even know how stuff, yeah. but yeah. I came from a place of, hey, I felt your energy. I'm like, no, I like, bro. Like, we yeah. good people. Yeah. Man, you know, as a matter of fact, let me go on and hook you yep. up with her. Then you went to G-Dub, because I remember going to G-Dub, and your book was on the... Yeah. And I was like, bro, made that move, and he did his yep. thing. Yep. Then I'm talking about I get back to the office. They're like, yeah, we found our guest speaker. I'm like, who? they like, Eric Jones. I'm like, wow. I'm like, yeah. I just met dude last week, and yeah. you know, already to... Yeah. And now you work for him. Like, yeah. you never know yeah. how stuff is going to work, or, you know but that's I mean? that's the that's the part of understanding, okay, I see somebody. Let me Let me put them on. Let me just introduce them and see what they do with it. Because and I didn't some, promise nothing because yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, I said, bro, look, I ain't in a position. Like, I was like, bro, I ain't, that ain't even my position. Yeah. But I can hook you up with the person yeah. who do. And, and, and if you hook me up with somebody, I got a mouthpiece. I'm going to get my way in there. <laughs> only I told my friend, uh, my bro the other day, the only thing I couldn't talk my way of was an ass whooping by my mama. That's the <laughs> only thing I can, I can like... And I just had to understand, but I'm looking at where I was then and where I'm at now is a total different. Now I can be in a classroom and teaching kids. I wasn't even in school. I don't think I started in schools yet. I was still working because that's when I first started. So I was still working at the food stamp office, answering the phone. And from there, I started speaking and going to the different stuff. It's like, yeah, you missing too many days. We don't have to let you go. And end up getting a job in a school, and I've been in there and been all over, and I'm, you know, where I'm at now. But it's, I tell people that, like, somebody asked me for podcast information. I'm gonna give you the information. Right. It's for you to run the play. Yeah, I'm gonna it. give you the play. I'm gonna right. tell you what I, and if you run the play, uh, that's on you. If you don't run the play, that's on you. But I'm gonna always look out for somebody, or if they saying something, I'm like, hey, I, oh, I know somebody that could help you, because. A lot of times it's the exposure that we have in our community that people didn't get or they don't see. And you expose them to somebody. Now it's like, boom, because ever since then, yeah, I've been booming with the speaking and Took and, and had. But I had to learn wow. like, oh, I just can't go up here and talk. Right, right. My story, cool. People love it. It's inspiring. But they're not leaving with nothing. How can I work on this? Oh, okay, let me. Oh, Eric Thomas. Okay, I'm learning from him. Now I got this coach. Now I'm joining the speakers thing. Oh, I'm certified to speak. Now I'm watching speakers and learning or bringing people on and learning from them. Like, I learned a lot of my language from bringing people on the podcast and listening mm -hmm. because I don't like to read. And I struggle reading a little bit. And, like, if somebody was like, oh, you got to read? I don't know But I know how to talk I know how to listen And that's helped me educate So sometimes It's not How you got to where you at I might not Have to go the same route Because I learned A certain way Or I Certain stuff And people have to realize That you got a crew You got your friends That don't mean You got to go Where they going Go the other way Because I'm pretty sure a lot of your friends, just like my friends, they ain't really into speaking and all that. They do something else. And it's like, that's cool. Do you? Because I'm going to do me. And this will work for me. And they love that. They love that we doing it because it also get, it lends them a voice. Yeah. Uh, and yep. for some of them, they uncomfortable. Yeah. The spotlight being on them or, but you get to bring their stories to life because you take them with you. Yeah. And if you got some real brothers. When you win, they win. Yep. And you and you make sure that they know they winning because yep. you talk about them. You still, when you go, hey, bro, I yep. don't know if you saw the podcast last night, yep. but I gave you a shout out yep. last night. Yep. And that wasn't on no no phony stuff. That yeah. was on some real stuff because, yeah. man, you, we got history and yep. we got legacy. And I want you to know that I wouldn't be here without you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I love, you know, what, you, what you've done. I, I, like I said, I've watched you grow. I watch you go from, like, I remember that speech. And I remember, I think, I don't know if you said something or you was talking to yourself when you got done, but you was like, like, I could have did better. 
Yeah, like, no. I could have did better. Yeah, yeah, I, like, yeah. Like, it was cool, but, but yeah. I could have did. I think I might have gave you some depth, and you yeah. were like, I could have did better. Yeah. And just to know that you can be that, like, uh, where you just, you looking at yourself, that self yeah. reflection. Yeah. Like, a lot of times we don't want to do that and we don't want to hear yeah. that. Like, it was cool to hear people tell you that you did a good job. But I want to be great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to be good. I yeah. want to be great. And yeah. so I know me. Yeah. I know what I could have said or what I could have yeah. did different. And so, man, I, I'm proud of you, little bro. Appreciate man, it. Man, for real, for real, man. And keep doing what you're doing, man. And uh, keep creating an opportunity and giving people a voice who may not have a voice or somebody who just started. Yeah. Like what you're doing, you creating with your platform, you shining a light on people but what you don't know is that that light, like light, it bounces. Mm -hmm. And so that light is coming back to you. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. You keep doing it with the heart that you're doing it with and how you're doing it. It's coming, bro. I, I, and just I appreciate that. Just keep preparing yourself. Yeah. Keep preparing yourself because yeah. it's coming. Yeah. And when it comes, you ain't going to go look for it. You don't have to look for it. Yeah. It's going to be, man, ain't no way y'all yeah. gave me an opportunity like this. Bro, I went to CLD in like 20... 15 and uh what's your boy Steve what's his name Steve he used to have a show I think his name uh last name Perry light skin brother he used to be on the OWN channel uh but he was their keynote speaker mm -hmm. and I talked to Dennis and Dennis introduced me to him and man, I'll never forget walking away from him I had just started my speaking journey mm -hmm. and I said man one day I'm gonna I'm gonna be the keynote here and then yeah. I was the keynote this year yeah and I reminded Dennis of that yeah. He was like, man, you blowing my mind. I'm like, man, I walked away from that like, I can do that. Yeah. And I'm going to do it. Yeah. But you got to start somewhere. You got to have a rabbit to chase. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? And but so, that was my that was my first keynote. So I was cool of speaking in front of people, but I it was like my reading of the room wasn't there yet. Like mm -hmm. me being able to understand like, okay, or being able to get the crowd involved. Like I'm learning as I'm going, especially taking that speaking um, course that I did. I'm learning how to uh, ask stuff. So that's why I was up there. I was like, man, I could, I could have did better. Like, but what it was, you had to dress up. And I don't like right. that. That ain't me. <laughs> like the uh, my neck thick and I'm up here like this. I'm like, no, this ain't me. I want to be able to go and just be myself. And right. I had to learn. That was like the first, you know, oh, we made it to the playoffs, but we got scraped. Okay, back to the drawing board. Yeah. And I appreciate you saying those things because sometimes, man, you got people that surround you that's close that don't even say nothing to you. Yeah. And you be like, dang, am I, you know, I know I'm doing a good job, but just sometimes hearing somebody else say it, it just be like, man. Especially woo. when it's genuine. Like, yeah. I yeah. ain't nobody paid me to say this. Yeah. Like, I, we always would hit each other on IG, like, yeah. sparingly. Yeah. Like, you would like something. Yeah. Or you would send me something. And I'm like, why we ain't never... Yep, or we like, see each other in an event right, crossing. I'm like, this ain't... We should have been got together and did yeah. something. Because, like I said, to to be a part of that and watch your growth. and But you've also seen me grow yeah. and evolve. Yeah. Because I was doing something totally different when we met. Yeah. And now, like, I went from that. And now I'm working at a college. And I'm the director of workforce development. And I'm teaching. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm like... Like, sometimes I had to pinch myself, like... Yeah, so then I ain't. I, don't, I moved here in 2016. I only been here eight years. I started in 2016. But you know what I'm yeah. saying? And so the stuff that we've been able to do over the last eight years, like just getting started. Sometimes, and and somebody told me to do it. They said get you an Excel spreadsheet and just start plotting on your Excel spreadsheet all of the things that you've done, good or bad. Yeah. Over the last eight years, just put them on there. Mm. If you can remember a date, put it on there. And then if you get somebody that knows how to make a, like, to turn that information into a graph, mm -hmm. bro, it's going to blow your mind when you see it. Mm. It's going to blow your mind. Because, look, I've I've literally sat and been like, I've done a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes, you know, you know you can be great and just like, I ain't done nothing. Like, people be all excited about stuff and I'll be like, man, I ain't done nothing. 
I ain't I ain't done none of the crazy stuff that I envisioned of myself. But like you said, I was just telling my uh, bro, I was like, man, it's coming. People don't even realize it. Like the 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 ideas over the last week of God like really showing me what where I'm supposed to be going with what I've been doing, and I didn't never touch this before. It's about like because the people didn't hit me back. So this week is full of meetings with the right people and to place me in the right areas. Hopefully checks can be involved this week. I know it's a process to it, but I'm gonna speak it in existence. Absolutely. But it's coming, and I'm like, hey, if you ain't kick it with me. If you ain't cool with me, don't be cool when you see me up. I promise I'm don't say I'm acting phony. No, you right. wasn't there. And it's like I be playing, but I don't. It's like, all right, some of y'all women, that's y'all fault. Y'all yeah. should have stayed around. Oh, he was too busy. Oh, he was that. Well, I was creating. That's your fault. But hey, that's on you. Uh let me ask. Uh let's see. So with what you're doing, what are you looking to break? Build and bridge for your future and like your business and different things of that sort. Uh, legacy. Uh, I was sitting in the car uh, and you know how like we were supposed to do 530 and then yeah. something happened. Yep. But it happened for a reason because it allowed me time to get off the highway, decompress from that. It was a two and a half hour drive. Yeah. So I was just out there. Just I cut the music off. I had the windows rolled down. Yeah. I just was chilling. And I started to type in my phone. And I I wrote. For me, it's about legacy, family history, and my personal drive to settle for nothing less than greatness. Uh, for me, it's my family. I got people who went before me who laid it down. Yeah. So that I didn't have to go through some of the things that they went through, even though I still went through them because of the bad choices that I made. Yep. But at some point in life, you have to recognize that people have laid their lives on the line, sacrifice for you to have it better. Mm. And for you not to do better, that's not their fault. As much as we want to blame it on them, that's our fault because we didn't take yep. the information and do what we were supposed to do with it. And so for me, it's about building a legacy. Uh, I got three kids, but I got two little boys. I got two grandsons, and God knew what he was doing. Yeah. One is two and one is nine months, and I get to I get to do it over again. I got a son, and I did some things wrong with my son, uh, and but I get a do-over two times. Yeah. So I got two boys. He knew I needed some boys that's going to keep me active and keep yeah. me young. Yep. And I still love the game, so I still go to yeah. the gym and play. Yeah. But it also it, it's going to allow me to, as they're growing up, as I'm still figuring, because I'm still figuring it out. I yeah. don't ever want to, you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't ever, I don't ever want to get the prize. Yeah. Because when you get the prize, then that means it's over. Yeah. I just want to keep chasing for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And so for them, I want them to be able to see how I chase for it, uh, how when I got it that I was uh, a giver, that I made yep. sure that everybody was cool. Uh, I, I I didn't get the big head. I didn't think that I was better than anybody uh, because I know as quick as I get it, I could lose it. Yep. And I've been broke before. I've been homeless. And so I know what all of those things look and feel like. And so I'll never forget that. And so I take those things with me. But now I'm taking the memories and the heartache and the pain of my, my my granny, my granddaddy, my dad, my mom, like my mentors that are not here anymore. Like all of those people who made a true investment in Jamal Tyree Sylvester, uh, I now take those things with me. Uh, and it's helping me move different. It's helping me make different decisions. I used to make decisions solely on me. Uh, but now I have to make decisions because the decision that I make today uh, could have a ripple effect from 10 to 20 years from now. Yep. And I want to make sure that what I'm doing right now, I'm building an umbrella over my kids, but I'm building a, a, a infrastructure for my grandkids. Yep. You know what I mean? My yep. kids get the umbrella, so they get to get blocked from the, but I'm trying to build an infrastructure so that when they get old enough, man, they ain't got it. It's going to already be there waiting for them. Yep. If you don't do it, it's because you made a choice, but it's going to be there waiting on you. Yep. Yep. That's, that's exactly. <clears throat> 
what I want to do, like, is legacy, man. It's all about the people after you, but the people before you. Like, my granddad, he couldn't see the majority of my life. I, he wasn't he wasn't fully blind because that man could do everything except for drive. But just to see someone have to have adversity, didn't realize it as a kid. Wow. I'm with him every single day. He going through this adversity, but it's not adversity. And the same thing where people look at me, they like, oh, he should have some adversity. Oh, I do. Trust me, I do. I wake up in pain every day, but I don't show it because I know he never showed it. He never, I never seen my granddad like really upset, mad or anything. And it's for me to show the same thing to my son so he can show to his son and sons and pass it along. Even though his mom didn't allow him, I'm a junior, didn't allow him to be, have my name. It's like he got his own identity, Absolutely. but he still got Jones at the end of his name. Yeah. So he still can uh, carry that along, which he is. And he doing better than me and he only 10. And I'm like, I want to be like him when I grow up <laughs> because he's doing stuff. He don't even realize it. He 10. He just going with the flow of things, like the way he's traveling, winning these awards. People all over the world uh, know who he is or buying his book and different stuff like that. Like, that's what it's about. It's to make sure your kids are having a better life and not just the material things. Because I don't just – he get he get the more – the material, granny, mama, mom, look out, and if mom don't – Call his granny. Granny going to get it. Got two grannies. So right. he going to get it from them. I'm like, no, you got to earn it, bro. Yeah. I'm 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 hard-nosed because I want him to not have to wait till he's 30 to realize some of the stuff that I should have realized mm. or some of the stuff that I'm learning. Like, okay, I used to be in, uh, used to hustle. Okay, you hustle in these books. This is how you got to hustle these books. You got to re-up. You yeah. can't, oh, I got, I, I got, all, I sold all my books. Now I got money. Now I want to go buy. Yeah. So how you going to get more product to sell more to make more money? You're not. Yeah. And it's just those things that we have to install in our kids. We can't install what we wanted. We got to install what we didn't know. Yeah. And if we do that, whatever, you know, route they go in, they going to be, they going to be successful at it. Um, man, I appreciate you. Like, for real, for real, like, uh, just the, the kind words and to know you've actually saw from where I started and the same thing with you, the same as my last guest, man. It's like I love seeing people that I actually know and was there and they're somewhere else. And it's like, OK, it's obtainable. Yeah. You, know, you, you know, it's coming. It's coming for you. You, you know, because I could have gave up. I could have been like, oh, I'm going to just stop and just work this regular job. But I couldn't because I wouldn't I wouldn't been happy. Yeah, I wouldn't have never been happy. But I appreciate you. Appreciate everything you do. Uh, and I love that you have on your Notre Dame. I, yep, <laughs> go because, Irish. Yes, go Irish. <laughs> uh, I don't know what we're going to do in football because it don't always end well for us. But right. I'm always going to root for them. Um, so give us an underdog quote and then tell people how they can reach you. Oh, man. My, my, my quote is, man, my why is, is greater than my why not. Uh, I live by that. Uh, I've, I've had an a up and down roller coaster ride of a life. Uh, but I wouldn't trade it in for the world. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, those things or those times in life where I had excuses, and mind you, they could be legitimate. Yeah. You know, so I don't even want to say excuses. I had things going on in yeah. life that I really could have been like, you know what? F mm. this. I'm out. Yeah. Uh, but I'm so thankful uh, for realizing and finding my why. Uh, because once I found my why, who, what, when, where, and how didn't even matter because I know why. Yep. Uh, and if you want to reach me, uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, Jamal Sylvester, uh, is it CY? CYCP. Uh, so I have two accounts. Then my personal account is Jamal Mr. Me Too Sylvester. I'm on IG as Jamal Sylvester. Reach out, connect. Uh, I would love to, you know, talk. Uh, coach, any of those things, but more importantly, man, I just want to be a connector, man. And if you need a dot connected, I just I know everybody. The people at my job, like man, you know everybody. I've been here eight years, but I've been intentional about the work that I do and building the right relationships. And so, if I don't know them, then I know somebody that know them. And because I built right, sometimes I can make things happen just by making a phone call. Like I don't always have to pull out my 
my credit card or my debit card. Uh, sometimes it's a word that I could just make a phone call and say, hey, hey, I, hey, my man, hey, my bro Eric said he need this. Look out for him. And they're going to do it because I built right. And so uh, if you're willing to do that, man, connect with me and, and let's make magic. Yeah, I love that. I love what you said. It, it ain't always about uh, a card because I had a mentor and I was going through life. He came down. We had an hour conversation. He got back on his flight, and that's the, all I needed. I didn't need – it wasn't him coming and be like, oh, here you go, I'm going to help you out because what would I have learned? So he gave me some steps. I followed those steps, and I got out of what I was in yeah. because it's not always about, you know, uh, a dollar. It's like you said, hey, such and such, hey, we and you good. They, they good with me, so I need you to look out for them, and that's how, you know, things happen. So appreciate you for being the person you are because everybody not like that. Everybody not like that. Um, no, they used to be like that. Yeah, uh, and it I takes growth. Like it takes that. growth. And, and and being on the other side of when you really needed somebody to be like that for you. Yeah. And they didn't. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst feeling because this Listen. was my chance. This yeah. was my shot. And then you ain't even. Yeah. But you bro this and bro yeah. for real. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh that's that hurt. A, that's and a so, whole nother podcast. Right. Look. Because <laughs> boy, but that's what that's what yeah. allowed me to shift and start doing it, and I do it. Whether you've been good to me or whether you deserve it or not, because that's not my call. If mm -hmm. God put it on my heart to do, I'm doing it. Yeah. Uh, and people don't always understand that either. Like, yeah, you might, you may feel like they was undeserving, but that's not why he put it on my heart to do. Yep. Uh, I, will, know, I've been I in there. Deal with that. Yeah, I've been <laughs> in them situations. But yep, I'm I'm one that I've been there. Or okay, I I, I want to help somebody. Ooh. Ooh, this person asked me for some, I'm, but I don't know if somebody that I asked sent me something and if they was looking at their account. So let me go ahead and send it because it's always going to come back to you. But, man, I this is a, a cool conversation. It Sometimes you can have a conversation without having to necessarily go into business or go into deep into and just have a conversation because we too – Regular guys that just found our purpose and and living our purpose and being who we are, who God told us to be. True underdogs. And nothing, man. nothing more, nothing left. True underdogs, and yeah. that's what underdog talk is for. For people to come on and just have a conversation, because I feel like every conversation I have, whether it's with my son, whether it's with a, a, a multi millionaire, whether it was just somebody I knew, I always learn from them. Because that's my intention is to learn from whoever's sitting in that opposite seat from me. Um, give us a oh, I gotta give my shout outs. Underdog talk. Just spell underdog U N D D A W G talk. Google it, you'll find me. That's that's the easiest way. Um shout out to uh who do I wanna shout out this week? I'm gonna shout out my son just for him stepping outside the box and um talking to people and then he actually read in front of people that was for him that's dope because he he struggled with reading okay. so reading and you know talking in front of people everybody not used to that and it was a nice little crowd of people so shout out to him just for overcoming his fears and stepping outside of the box and not making me and your mama do all the work <laughs> yeah so shout out to him for that but uh give us a closing word before we get out of here uh man uh stay focused Stay humble, uh, and more importantly, stay together, stay connected. And on that note, keep being great. I just got to take a picture of the day. We good. Cool. All right. <laughs>